And now on the Nordic Football Podcast, we're delighted to be joined by a special guest this week. It's the Trumpsa manager, Simo Valakari. Thanks very much for joining us, Simo. How are you today? Oh, thank you very much. Good. Everything is good. We, we kick off the season last, last weekend. And now it's business as usual. Best, best time to you know, have a free season going on. Yes, the first match of the season. Uh, victory for Trumpsa away at uh, Ranheim. And this was quite an incredible match, actually, for anyone who didn't see this game. Um, the first half was played in, in blizzard-like conditions. Uh, snow on the pitch everywhere. Uh, Runheim uh, led 1-0 at half-time and uh, Tromsø came back to, to take the three points. Um, I mean, incredible game, uh, Simo. In, in terms of the, the weather, I mean, you would have seen the forecast for this, uh, for this game. But uh, is it actually realistic to prepare... Uh, playing uh, in snowy conditions. Uh, actually, um, uh, our location, Tromso, we are so far north, and this is kind of hard to believe. I think the people they believe other way around. They 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 say that okay, uh, snow. You need to play in snow. You have used to play in snow, and that's true. We have trained now, and I'm not lying. And this is literally. Every day it has been snowing now in our drops. So unfortunately, we do not have uh, indoor facilities where we could train. So we have we have had need to be we have needed to train outside in the snow. But it's it's a funny thing when you have training four months in the snow, and you think, okay, we get now the season will start. We get the south part of the Norway. Then it's no snow. We can play in good conditions, and then you walk out of the locker room when game should start. You walk to the tunnel, be ready to go to your first match, and you see it's snowing even more than Tromso. It's snowing so much it <laughs> hit our players so hard, and I have to say the players they were shocked. I was spontaneously when I walked out of the locker room. I was. And I said it aloud in a tunnel. I was like, what the... How is possible it's snowing here? And I have to say that the first half, it was so difficult. Yes, we were one nil down, but it could have been, maybe it could have been even much, much worse. We had a one 10 minutes uh, break. They needed to, needed, needed to, you know, clean the field and everything. But then, fortunately... The weather for the second half was very good, so we were able to play our kind of football and we have managed to win. But that, people say, you are used to playing in the snow, but it's not good how we want to play. No. It's not good for our players. And then when you have been training four months in the snow, it's not funny anymore. To, you know, if, it, if it happens one off time, yeah, this is what I experienced. But when it happens every day, it's so hard. But yeah, but that's 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 how we go. But end of the day, you know, very good second half, and we managed to get all three points. Yes, I mean, I've just have some key statistics for the second half. Uh, you had forty nine percent possession as opposed to thirty nine percent in the first half. Your passing accuracy increased by ten percent, and uh, the amount of duels that Ranheim players won uh, dropped by ten percent as well. So basically, you were better in in that sort of um, capacity in the second half. I mean, I'm guessing you gave him a bit of a bollocking at half time um, to actually, turn that around. Actually, um, it, it was bollocking. It was more like, you know, we had a very good game plan, a specific game plan when we went to play. But unfortunately, uh, the, the weather, what you can cannot control, it, it, it played a part. But still, the players, I saw it already at half time, the players felt it that because. You felt it when the first half, you know, finished. That okay, now the weather will change, and I felt it the positiveness in a in a locker room. And actually, we were not playing that well. Uh, the first half, we could not collect the passes, we could not uh, win that many duels. But the players tried all the time execute the right actions, so they were following the game plan. So it was nothing to do, you know, bad attitude or not. To, not, not working hard enough. They play it. They they put very good effort first half, but we could not just play well. So it was just more adjusting, be positive that we will turn if we do these things. And the players 
then we grow, grew in the match in the second half. And, uh, and uh, yeah, it, it was not in this match. I, I didn't do any any, any shouting or anything. Mm. The players they were following you know, the plan, but still three points. But uh, still our uh, passing accuracy, those kind of things. It's not the level where we wanted them to be, but we were. As you said, you know, big improvement for for the second half, and I think the main reason was because we were able to play a little bit more our our way, our kind of football. Yeah, yeah let's just talk about uh, the Trumps away under Simo Valakari now, and um, well, really, for for listeners who aren't aware, you're quite a strong possession based team, aren't you? You um, uh, I tend, tend to keep the ball quite a lot. You had the highest passing accuracy out of anyone in the Elite Serien in two thousand. And eighteen. So, what is the Simo Valakari philosophy of football? Would you say in general? Uh, that's a, that's a big big question, big big question. But uh, generally, I would like to you know put it shortly that we would like to we we like to control the things. Is it then with or without the ball? And of course, uh, if you can win by control. So what meaning that that we have always, you know, uh game plan. We try to control with the ball, we try to have a possession, we try to connect as many passes as possible. Of course not just sake of possession, but try to move the opponent, find overloads, find um, different angles how we can pass it so we can control with the ball. Then if we control the game with the ball it will lead almost automatically that we can control without the ball because when there is a turnover or there is a transition for the opponent, we are in a good position to start our defending actions. So as much as possible through the 90 minutes, we should be in control in, in, in situations. And then, of course, in football, random things happen. But if you are more... If you are more in control than not, you are more proactive. You know what to do with or without the ball. It, we believe, I believe, it gives us a better chance to win, win, win the football football match. So basically, put it in short. Yes, we, that's why the reason we want to have a possession because then we have the players in the right positions. Our balance on the field should be should should be right if you are able to connect the passes. So that's kind of the identity, and I believe we have good footballers here. It's much for much more fun, you know, to play play with the ball and, and try to try to, as I said, to, to be proactive. Try to find those spaces and holes what opponent leave leave us when we move when we move the ball. So yeah, we try to play with the ball. Yeah, I think you you actually play a very nice style on the eye, and it must be uh, nice for the fans up there in Tromsø to to see a football team play. In that sort of way, uh, let's just talk a little bit about Thrumsa itself. Uh, it is the world's most northerly city with a population of more than 50,000 people. I mean, we're well up there in the Arctic Circle here. Um, the most northerly uh, professional football team in the world at uh, top level. Um, what was the appeal for you at Thrumsa uh, before taking over, do you think? Uh, yeah, um, actually, um, I did. I had very good four years, you know, back my home country uh, in Finland, and then, as always, as most of the coaches, you know, I was <laughs> I was kicked out, or we were, you know, the, that one journey end up end up there, and then I got this possibility to get here, and of course, Elite Serien in Norway for me to come in Finland, it's all the respect to. Finnish football, all the respect to Finnish league, but it's a little bit higher standard. It's a little bit bigger environment. So to Trump's are looking for a new head coach, and uh, and through different kind of connection they found 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 me. It was pretty obvious. Even you know, I came here year and a half ago. The club was the team was very bad position, bottom of the league, not winning matches. But still, I saw the possibilities in in the club. I saw the possibilities within the team, and maybe the biggest thing is that there is not that many Finnish football coaches who are working abroad because. From uh, at the moment, unfortunately, Finnish football is not that highly rated. You know, 
anywhere else. So to get you know this chance as a Finnish football coach somewhere else, I knew that I need to take take this chance. I knew that this is my my uh, opportunity to be yes. successful and bring the Finnish coaches. That was kind of the appealing thing for me. That's very good. Um, I mean, in terms of, we always ask this question actually to uh, to people who uh, are familiar with Scandinavian football in detail. The, the difference between the leagues um, in Finland, Norway, Sweden, perhaps Denmark. I mean, um, what would you say in in ranking order in Scandinavia is is the best standard of league? Uh, I think you know, of course, it's hard to compare, but I, I think it, you you can find you know the facts, you know how the teams are, how they in Europe and things like that but what I can com- compete now, uh, compare now you know I can compare Finnish and Norwegian league and Norwegian league is uh, much more faster it's much much more uh, end-to-end football much more uh, the influence from England kind of the old days these players are very athletic here they are very they can run all day fans here in Norway they want that things happen in penalty boxes so it's 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 very very fast and physical league much more physical than maybe maybe uh, Sweden definitely much more physical and faster than league in, league in Finland you know when uh, which league is the, the better and which football is the better that's always the discussion but but uh, I think Norwegian league this is a um, very interesting league and it has a Good clubs and uh, big clubs, you know, and good players, and it's it's very demanding league to to play play here yeah, to be mm. successful. Okay, well, let's just um, uh, move on to Tromsø again, specifically, and um, you recently signed a contract extension with the club uh, through to two thousand and twenty two. And one of the uh, things you actually said in a comment on the official website was uh, you're delighted with the the project here, and the, a lot of the players. Or at a young age, and you can see them developing over the next few years. And uh, you have actually got some really interesting young players at the club who are not just um, waiting in the wings in the second team, or, or even you know on the on the substitutes bench. You have got some young regular starters, or at least guys who would get starting games quite uh, on a regular basis. So I just want to talk to you a little bit about some of these players. Um, we're going to start with your own son, if you don't mind. Uh, <laughs> bit of an interesting one. Um, but only Valikari, just 19 years old, uh, central midfielder, who's definitely caught the eye in, in the last couple of years. I'm sure you can tell us plenty about him, but uh, just a bit about some of his main qualities, Sir Simo. Uh, first of all, I have to say um, how I see it. It's an old saying, it doesn't matter how old or young you are, you just need to be good enough. And it's the same little bit, you know, with these players here. They are not just playing because they are young players. They play that they're good enough to play here. And then one uh, second thing is, yes, we are a development club. We have very strong academy. I think last two years we have had most productivity points like in, than any club in Norway. So it means that we have our own academy play academy mm-hmm. players, they have played most minutes than any other any other club. So our academy is very strong. But as I said, you know, I, I, I love you young players and I, I love, you know, when they can play with, without uh, without the fear. I, 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 I love young players to see that they come every day and they have that fire in their eyes that they want to improve and they want to do, be, they kind of, they're like that, those sponges, you know, they, they can suck everything, all the information that you can give them. And then, of course, uh, I myself, you know, when I played, I was not that good player but I thought maybe as a coach I can influence more more you know these young players and keep maybe some advantages I never got as a player which maybe maybe would have made uh, made me a better player so that's why I like those young players and then of course they have future in front of them and they, it's a, they are fun, fun to work when you're actually um, looking at the young players, what do what do you what's the most important qualities you, you you want there? Do you want raw technique? Do you want mentality, determination, um, what, or a mixture of those sort of things? Uh, of course, the mixture is the best. But what I look, you know, maybe first thing from the young player, I look, I look the character. And when I say I look the character, that character 
it it holds many things it holds that technical ability it holds that mental side it holds that physicality but most of all it holds that you can stand you can stand in a first team training you can stand in a first team match and be yourself be the young player and then of course young players the mistakes will come but how you react after that i look young players i look that i think it's very important uh, if I can see the young player, he will do some mistakes, but then if we correct those things during the week, during the next few months, and he will learn, I think that's what I look you know, that the learning capacity, because of those young players, they will, they will make mistakes, but how quickly they can adapt, how quickly they can correct those mistakes through the training, through the information, what we as a coach, we, we give them, so they game intelligence you know that's 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 very important what i look from from young players mm -hmm. and how they can play part of the collective how that it's not just the individual technical brilliance it's not the youtube clips what they do but how they play how they play as a collective unit how they play part of that team who will execute execute the team plan that's part of kind of things you know i i look you know from young players and then of course all the young players, they have their own strengths. They have you know, their things what, what what they can improve. But that's that's normal with the young players. But mostly that character and that ability to learn. That's that's very important. Yes, the uh, when we had Tony Ordinas on the, on the show uh, last year, he said pretty much the same thing actually. Um, very important to do with the, the character uh, of the players. Uh, obviously, Trumsa relies on its academy to bring players through, but also. Uh, in terms of scouting and, and bringing in new transfers, um, how much of a key part do you personally play in that? No, actually, um, uh, uh, it's kind of, of course, um, good people working, you know, scouting. We have good people working the transfer, but then we kind of decide all, 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 all together. And of course, we all have our different connections. I have, now we have brought, as you said, it, you know, my own son only Valakar we have brought here but we have brought in two more Finnish players because I knew them before and that maybe our club didn't know you know so we have a different connection different people here so it's that we work work as a team so it's a pretty interesting process how, how we do it and just a word on some of your sort of fringe uh, young players that um, potentially the likes of say Marcus Holmgren uh, Holmgren Pedersen yeah. Sigurd Grunley um, mm -hmm. Jakob Karlström, do you think they could potentially challenge for first team spots this uh, season? Yeah, they are, they are very much in a mixer, and they all, all those players and a uh, couple of more they have had a very strong pre season and they are pushing really, really what I like so much every day they're pushing so called our seniors player players in a training, and I don't have any hesitation to if I need to use them and actually I'm hoping so much that one of those players even two three will make you know kind of you know break break through this this year but at the same time the young players they need to understand and we have a discussion you know all the time all the time with young players that maybe a uh, their role will be something different they are not the regular starters in that uh, for yet for our first team, but their role can be that they play that 15 minutes, 20 minutes now and then. By, but I said it's not the end of the day. Oh, I'm not playing. I'm not playing. They are here, a good environment. We work the individual plan. You know, they train it well every day, and then they get you know these minutes there. They get those minutes there, and then maybe some start there. But it's as well, you know, for those young players, they need to be patient. But to say that. We can't just wait, uh, you are young, you will get your chance. No, uh, when you are 18, 19, some, of, some players, they already think something like they are stars. So it's possible to do as well. But at the same time, football in your head, you need to be patient. But you need to do every day that I'm as best as I can now. So that's kind of how I see development of those young players. How uh, how important would you say the likes of Morton Gamps Pedersen and Simon Vangberg are in terms of role models at the club for these young players? They are priceless to be that role, role model. Both of them, um, they are so good 
professionals and uh, taking example Morten comes Pedas and he has played the highest level but still every day when he comes in uh, the, um, the professional shows through through him it's not like he he's taking anything for granted I, I played this I know how this will do he has he, he has had good sleep he has eaten well he will come early in the training to prepare his body he will listen all the tactical lectures what we have then he goes out and train always pushes his limits on the training at the same time having fun of course and then he comes back uh, after training take care of his body what he needs to do afterwards then he eats and then he sleeps and then he do same thing next day so that's what the young players they need to they need to realize that it's not like okay i do it well today and then i can take it easy no to be a top athlete be a top footballer you need to do it every day 24 24 yeah. 7 and then year after year so that's they are very good role models i'm I so could, happy to have them here. i could imagine that you might you may even have played against morton gams Patterson back in your playing days see i don't know because uh, <laughs> you were I, I, I think we were but maybe, uh, but maybe I think we never, never played in himself, But you know, but but uh, yeah, he's still, uh, still he has a lot of football in his body, you know, and that's because he has taken care of his body all through all yeah. these years. Yes, um, so just a bit of background for the listeners uh, about Simo Valakari. As a player, you uh, were at Derby County in the Premier League and the Championship. Uh, Motherwell in Scotland, uh, SC Dallas over in America. Interesting one. Yeah along with yeah. some other Finnish clubs as well. And as a manager, you were at SJK in Finland for five years with uh, plenty of uh, silverware there. Uh, you won the Finnish League Cup, the Finnish League Championship, which I can imagine is quite a big uh, a big achievement with a club like SJK in Finland and also a Finnish Cup. So you've had plenty of uh, great um, success in the past. And I think I always get the sense with you that you are an ambitious manager. In terms of Trumsa itself, what sort of investment is needed at this club to make a challenge in the top five or six in the elite area? Yeah, very good question. That's kind of the question, you know, what we what we try to find an answer inside here at the club. But the situation now with the club, it um, it has been uh, very bad financially. So. What now the new board and new the leaders, what they have come in, they try to kind of steady ship and kind of find, uh, find that foundation where we are. And I think it's progressing well. So now it's kind of, uh, we have, we now we know what we need to do. And then, of course, in football, yes, with the money, with the investment, you can do different things. But I think we have noticed in this club if you do it just short term fix. So we need to kind of build the build the culture inside the club. We need to have a strong academy. We need to have the way of playing, the identity, and then we can start uh, get successful in a long term. So it's not just a quick fix with the money because the, we have seen it doesn't take it take it anywhere. It can. It can win you something, maybe, maybe. So I think better possibility is that we kind of get the stable club, we work with our players, and then that gives me the hope. And as you said, it, I'm very ambitious, ambitious coach. I want to win trophies because that is football is all about. But at the same time, I get a lot of satisfaction, you know, working with this process with the young player, working with the club that we're building something here. And then that's the beauty of football. It's possible. Mm. It's so, especially in the elite setting. Yes, you have those big teams, you know, they are always there, you know, challenging there. But every year there's one one or two clubs who can, who can uh, you never thought that, okay, how oh, they are that up. But if you do the things right in football, in football, you can go almost against the odds and, you know, Earn that your earn your own luck or how, how yeah. you how you call it. But in football, football it's possible, and that gives me give, give, gives me the hope. And that's why I see the future of Trump's so football club as well. You know, you know, very interesting. Yeah, and you have a great connection. It seems to me like you have a great connection with the fans up there in Trump. So there was um, 
a very interesting video I saw um, in back in January. It was the polar bear pitching competition. <laughs> where <laughs> you had to submerge yourself in ice to pitch for the club. But it really feels like you have a great rapport there um, with the fans and, and a great connection. Um, is that true? I I hope so. I, I feel it. And I feel this city, I feel this football club means so much for people here, so much for the fans here. Yes, if we are not winning as we were not winning as much as we wanted last last autumn, last last part of last season, of course they made their opinions hurt. They 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 were very critical. But at the same time they do love this club and they want to be part of this this journey. So it's um I always compare this this place, we have two local, two local papers who are every day in a, in a, in our training, and they it's a lot of stories every day for the local papers. I compare this place like it seems like to be in England. It's so, so intensive, intensive. This you know the, uh, the kind of attention what you get here as a football club, and I, I really like it because football is a passion. It's about the feelings and. Oh, we need to give feelings for the fans, and I, I, I hope. My, of course, it doesn't matter how good I am or how great our players are. If we are not playing that way that the fans are enjoying, if we are not winning the football matches, the fans they are not enjoying. So we need to give something to the fans. And, uh, yes. But that's it. I hope that the relationship. It's, 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 I have enjoyed that good fans. They coming. Home matches, they coming away matches. You know the people who are not living in uh, Tromsø who live so part of Norway, Oslo, around there. So they always come to away matches. So it's a, a very passionate football club, this Tromsø. Okay, well we'll finish with a few random questions about the club now. Um, yes. And uh, well, uh, as you're quite well aware, the elite Serien fantasy is very popular uh, these days and um, there's a couple of your players who are currently on the injury list who uh, were popular last year Mushika Bakenga and Aruna Espior I just wondered if you could give us an update on uh, their physical condition yeah uh, Bakenga unfortunately he, he tore or broke his Achilles tendon last 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 autumn and, but he's working his way back now he has done some individual football football stuff on the field but it's still a long long journey Bruno Respier um, he was our top player last year but then he got some groin, groin problems and end up you know operation table good news with Runa now he has been training now team uh, two weeks in a row football training almost fully but of course he has been out six months now so it still takes little little time little time yeah, to him to get the full fitness, but he's he's progressing as as planned, and hopefully, I would hope that it's we're talking more more than one month and three months than before we see him in real action. So it's good good news. That's very good news with uh, Bruno Espio there. Uh, yes. Formations. Um, are we going to see because the, the weekend it was more of a four four two for you? Are we going to see uh, a change from the three at the back this year a bit more? Yeah, I think so. It was already last year our kind of um, one of our that we could be um, flexible depending on the players what we are available, depending on the opponent, things like normal normal football stuff. And now, like yeah, last match we went four four two, four three three, depending with or without the ball. So I like that we are flexible. Two reasons: it it helps the players what we have. Yeah, maybe if we have a little bit different team than last year, and then. For opponent, it makes it a little bit more difficult to predict what we what we what we try to do. So it's a, it's a more interesting and it's a good process to be able to do a couple of couple of different ways. And the elite area in itself, who is your prediction to win the league this year? Uh, I think it's it will be more even league this year. And then of course there will be Molde, there will be uh, Brown, Salzburg, but still I would say then. Uh, most famous and maybe the biggest club in Norway, Rosenborg. They have that winning culture. They didn't start well, you know, this weekend, but they are good clubs. They have good players. So if I would need to choose one who will win this year, if it's not Trump, so, but of course, but I, I would say, I, I would say, Rosenborg. And I've got a final question for you. It's about yes. your rivalry um, with Buda Glimt. 
um, in the north of Norway there. Is that the most important fixture for Trump's, uh, would you say, in, in the season? Is that the first one you look out for when the fixtures are out? Actually, I, I have to say, when I came here, I look, okay, we don't have any local teams. We have a uh, 10. No, 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 no. We have we have local team. Yeah, it's a poor team. It's a 600 kilometers, six hours by car, you know, from here. But now I noticed last year we played of course, two matches against them. We won one away, but then we lost home match. And I have to say, I never. I have played, you know, Derby County, Nottingham, Derby. I have seen, you know, in Sydney, Finnish Derbys. But to lose that match and walking in a city next week, I really, I really saw, and I have to say, felt it, how much it meant to the people because it was, it was not, not nice. I, I, I saw that the people, they were hurting and they let me know as well that it's not possible. Never, ever you can have lose against Buda So it's a big rivalry and actually it's a, it's so, so cute. And I have to say, Buda they were at the uh, first division and everyone, almost everyone in Tromsø, they were hoping that let's get the Buda back to Edith and that we get this local derby. It's because it's good for Norwegian football, it's good for the fans, even it's a very big rivalry, but it's very good for North and Norway football. I have to say, I really do. Uh, I think it's great for North Norway football as well. Yeah. I, I, I really like both clubs. I, I always hope they do well in the Elite Serie. And there's just something different about having teams, you know, in the far extremes of a country in the world. And um, uh, you're actually playing each other on the 16th of May, um, on a Thursday, the 16th of May, which is a big footballing day in Norway, Tromsø against Buda Glimt. Simo Valakari, thank you very much for joining us on the Nordic Football Podcast. It was an absolute pleasure. And uh, very best of luck for the rest of the season. Thank you very much. All the best. Thank you very much. Goodbye.